Hi everyone, welcome to 15 Minutes in the Forest. I'm Jennifer Gagnon with the Forest Landowner Education Program at Virginia Tech. And today I'm joining you from a local home improvement store in Christiansburg, Virginia. I have a special guest with me today, Dr. Brian Bond. He's a wood product specialist in the Department of Sustainable Biomaterials at Virginia Tech. And today he's gonna to be talking to you about the different types of solid wood products you can find, uh, how they're made, and uh, different uses for them. All right, so this is common two by material that you see in a home improvement store. This would be used for structural purposes and home building, uh, additions, that type of thing. We've got uh, two by sixes right here. They come in different lengths. The, the key thing here is that this species is usually coming from the West Coast, uh, Canada, or even some European countries. This would be a combination of spruce pine fir and you'll actually see on the board what the what the species is what the grade is you can see on here spf stands for spruce pine fir the grade is a number two kd mean that means that it's been kiln dried uh, ht is for heat treatment uh, and then it has the grading agency that's on there but the most uh, important thing for the person would be what is the size of the timber what is the grade and what is the species so this material doesn't come from virginia it's going to typically come from the uh, West Coast or in Canada, or I've even seen lumber from uh, Scandinavia in, in some of these stores. This is another common product. This is uh, pressure treated Southern pine lumber. The pressure treatments uh, done so that the lumber will last a longer period of time when it's exposed to the elements. Uh, it prevents decay and in insects, termites. Uh, there's two types of pressure treated lumber typically. Those are pressure treated for ground contact so that the wood can be in contact with the ground. Uh, and, the, and there's also a formulation for above ground contact that would be like deck boards and things that would be uh, not in ground contact or high, high risk exposure. Most pressure treated lumber in this particular store is uh, micronized copper azole is used as the preservative. That is both the insecticide and the fungicide. And if you're curious of what product is used or what preservative is used for your pressure treated lumber it's usually on the tag that's on the very end sometimes it's on the back of the tag uh, sometimes it's on the front this tells you the brand name uh, and on the back it tells you what what the preservative is um, most fence posts and agricultural products use something called uh, cca uh, chromated copper and arsenic materials uh, that are not allowed to be used in residential use uh, so most of the time what you find in, in the uh, home stores is a copper azole or micronized copper type product. Uh, Southern yellow pine is the species that here in Virginia is the most common species used in pressure treated lumber. The reason for that is it readily accepts pressure treatment very well. Um, and it is of course potentially a product of Virginia. We produce probably about 800 million board feet of southern yellow pine in the state. And so this is a product that a lot of our lumber from our sawmills uh, goes into pressure treated lumber. Uh, so here's an example of a naturally durable species that you can get. Um, and this would compete somewhat with uh, pressure treated wood in non-ground contact applications. This would be Western, uh, Western red cedar, uh, obviously not grown in the state of Virginia, but imported from the Western parts of the state or Western part of the country. Um, interesting thing to know about cedar is if you're looking for using cedar in an exterior application, the material you want is the darker red color, not the white. So the white would be called sapwood. It does not have the decay resistant properties that the heartwood has. Um, but the heartwood of western red cedar is very durable um, in exposed applications, uh, non-ground contact. Used a lot in decks, uh, planters, and, and those type of applications outside. Another pine product, uh, tongue and groove. This is used a lot in, in ceilings or in walls. Uh, it has a, a pattern in it, a, a bead pattern in it, and it's tongue and grooved on the side so uh, you can easily place them one in the other um, when it's when it's uh, assembled and put up to, to give it some ability to move uh, and expand and contract with moisture changes very common in, in uh, ceiling structures and here we have some radiata pine from Chile in a pre-primed 
uh, shiplap siding that's become a very popular product for walls uh, and sides and interior environments. Very good, so here's a, another Virginia product, Southern Yellow Pine uh, is very common in, in Virginia. It's one of our prime softwood species. Uh, as I mentioned, there's about 800 million board feet produced uh, in the state. Uh, this particular Southern Yellow Pine is untreated and is used in beams uh, and floor joists and that type of uh, application. All right, so this is oriented strand board. Um, it's manufactured all over. This particular st oriented strand board is Southern Yellow Pine. It can be made from, from pine and hardwoods as, as well. Very common in Southern Yellow Pine. Uh, OSB is used as a sheathing product. It has very high strength. It has oriented uh, strands in it. So if you, look at the, at, if you look at the board carefully, you can see individual, I will call them flakes, individual flakes. They're actually oriented throughout the board, at least in three dif different directions. So there's some orientation parallel to the surface. There's orientation in the middle that's across the surface. And then on the back side, it should be more oriented parallel. And so that creates some cross bonding, um, cross strength, which makes it more dimensionally stable. It also provides significant strength to the panel product. Now, one of the advantages of OSB is you solve the size of the strands. They're pretty small and they're pretty thin. So you can use a very low quality raw material input to make a high value, high strength product. So for OSB, you can take crooked trees, bent trees, small diameter trees, uh, and process them into a high strength panel product. So the input raw material is lower than what it would be in cost than what we have over here, which is plywood. So plywood, uh, some plywood of the same thickness and um, can compete in the same applications as sheathing, subflooring, uh, or or specialty applications. Here you've actually got a sheet of what we call veneer. This is peeled from a log, so it's peeled like uh, on a lathe, uh, similar to a lathe action. And they're peeling an actual thickness of the material. And this this happens to be southern yellow pine. So all the way across this sheet, this sheet is one slice of veneer. And then underneath, there'll be other slices of veneers uh, or plies that are oriented in cross orientation. So similar to OSB, there are layers in here where there are cross orientations to get the bending strength that is required for these products. There are different thicknesses. There are different, uh, um, different orientations in the plies, or I should say number of the plies in these products. Uh, kind of a competing product for some applications, but this takes a much higher quality raw material. So you're going to have to have a larger size uh, log to input into a plant that makes um, plywood. And of course, as you peel that log, you're going to begin to get lower grade material in those veneers. Some of that will be used on the interior layers and some of that will be used on lower grade plywood. So you can actually see on plywood there is a grade here. Uh, here you see there's a BCX that's telling you that one side of that plywood is B grade, one the opposite side is a C grade of plywood. It tells you the thickness. So, the, so GP has a plywood mill in Emporia, Virginia. Well, that's the only plywood plant, uh, structural plywood plant that we have in the state. And OSB is made in uh, uh, Georgia Pacific and Brook Brookneal, Virginia. We have an OSB plant. All right, so what we're looking at now is, is some hardwood plywood. This would be, you know, we'd be using that for interior products, probably, you know, cabinets. Uh, if we're doing custom projects, woodworking projects, bars, uh, things like that. There's different species on the surface of that veneer, uh, on that plywood. So this is an example of hardwood plywood red oak where the top veneer and bottom veneer are going to be red oak. Uh, this is an example probably of, um, of a sand ply. So this is going to be a, 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 a different species, a foreign species on the, on the top and the bottom. Now what's used in the middle of these plies is probably yellow poplar uh, from Virginia. These, um, these hardwood plywood boards were made by Columbia Forest Products. Columbia Forest Products has a plant in Chatham, Virginia. So they'll use a lot of, of uh, native species cut in Virginia for the veneers on the interior, and then they may use uh, other species, either well, definitely produced somewhere else on the outside layers. And this is more of what I would call a visual or a decorative type, type plywood, whereas what we talked about before was more for strength uses, like uh, 
sheathing for roofs or subflooring or, or things like that. So this is an example of boards. Uh, boards are typically uh, three quarters of an inch surface material. Uh, they go with a different grading standard than does dimension lumber, which would be the two buys that we were looking at earlier. So a completely different set of grading rules. Um, boards are typically used for shelving, trim, molding, that type of thing. Uh, there are different grades associated for the boards. Uh, and you can see that most of these are probably spruce pine fir. They're probably spruce. Uh, why do I say that? If you look at where they're from in particular, um, these particular boards are actually manufactured in Sweden. Uh, there's a lot of high production uh, sawmills in Sweden producing spruce pine fir or spruce and fir. Uh, and so they're a major supplier for this particular uh, home store. So these are some select boards that would be used in molding and trim applications. A lot of contractors would use this uh, and trim around windows, doors. Uh, see, it's very clear material as well. This is pine. This is probably radiata pine come from, from Brazil or Chile. Very, very clear material. Um, some of this material, if it's going to be uh, painted in application, it comes with a, a primer coat. And one interesting thing, and one reason why uh, this material is relatively straight or very straight is the fact that it's jointed up by individual pieces that are oftentimes finger jointed. So you can see that finger join in here. This is a little less expensive because it is finger jointed and not cut from one solid piece uh, of material as you would have in the stain grade material which is down here. So most of these stores carry a small selection of hardwood material for your uh, small scale woodworker, if you're doing hobby woodworking or you're a contractor that needs some uh, exposed wood that maybe you're gonna stain. So they typically carry yellow poplar and oak. Uh, this is an example of some of their yellow poplar obviously produced here in North America. We don't know where, but uh, obviously yellow poplar is a big species in the state of Virginia. It's always uh, dried and surfaced and ready for use and typically it's the higher grade so if you look at the material here uh, this would all, all of this material in my opinion would be the highest hardwood grade which would be FAS uh, graded by the National Harvard Lumber Standards and we can see down here some selection of, of red oak the same type of thing you're looking at very very clear material um, obviously some of the highest grade material that's out there. It, again, it's planed and surfaced and dried and ready for use. So what we have here is, is particle board and MDF, two competing products basically uh, made from different raw materials. Particle board is used a lot uh, in, in cabinets and vanities. Um, if you were doing a home project, say you're a woodworker, you might make a desktop from this and then apply a veneer over it. Same with the MDF. Um, but very similar in some ways, they're using a waste product typically from, from other wood products manufacturing. So OSB uh, typically comes, is made from planar shavings uh, from sawmills. Those, those dried planar shavings go to a plant where it's, it's, the particle size is reduced. Um, it has different particle thicknesses from the surface into the center. Uh, OSB, or excuse me, particle board does have some issues with, with water. Uh, you don't want to get it wet. Either product, you don't want to get it wet because it swells significantly. And then when it dries out, it's broken the bonds that hold it together. So we, we definitely don't want to get these products wet at any time. Uh, MDF is more of a fiber-based product. So this is using wood particles. That's a waste product from a, from a milling process or wood processing facility. This is actually breaking down into individual fibers. So in MDF, you'll take that waste product, you'll heat it up, typically use a refining process to break those fibers down into individual fibers, and then you'll uh, adhere them together in a, in a giant press or a giant hot press. There's typically resins uh, used in particle board manufacture. Sometimes in a wet process MDF, there may not be any resins used, or if there are resins used, it's a very small amount. So you actually get some natural bonding in there. This can be a much higher density product, um, depending on, on the, uh, the, uh, how much material is used in the manufacturer than, than particle board. But both of these are manufactured as, uh, from waste from other processing here in the United States. So this is some, some shelving material, and you can see it's got a melamine cover on it, but what's inside is the particle board. Now we talked about particle board uh, a little bit ago. 
being a common product for, for shelving and ready-to-made furniture, but this is just an example of, of a finished product at the store made from the particle board we saw in rough form a little bit earlier today. Well, thank you for spending 15 minutes in a home improvement store with us. Thanks to Dr. Brian Bond for speaking today, and thanks to Landon Cox for letting us film this video at Home Depot. Uh, be sure to join us again in two weeks at 1215 for another edition of 15 Minutes in the Forest. Have a good weekend.